Well, antioxidants are mean. To me, actually, I think plant chemicals is a better name to call them rather than antioxidants. Antioxidants are chemicals that come from plants um, that go into the body to protect against oxidative stress. And oxidative stress is something that happens during disease. So a part of the body um, starts to break down for want of a better way of saying it. Um, and if you are eating plenty of antioxidants or plenty of plant chemicals, these go in and buffer the damage and they minimize the damage. They're part, um, the more antioxidants a horse has, the better he'll age. Um, I guess the main antioxidants that are used in uh, for nutritional companies are vitamin E and vitamin C. That's probably the, the two that people know the most of. But there are hundreds. Uh, one plant, um, uh, I mean, this the, the ivy being a noxious, uh, kind of kind of highly toxic plant, let's say, that the horse wouldn't need much of, contains maybe 50 to 100 different chemicals. They can all be called an antioxidant. They're all unique to that plant and they will all interact with a horse's body or even your own, your body, my body. Um, and they will, will do a job. They'll uh, change the way that the body reacts. They'll um, interact with the gut bacteria. Um, and some of them will be beneficial chemicals and some of them won't be, which is why when we find a plant that is very helpful and contains a chemical like this chenopodium called ecdysterone, we extract it from the um, plant and we put it into safe measures um, and that's the reason for making the supplement. It isn't any other reason than uh, we know what it is, we know what it does, we've done the clinical trials so we feel it's better to take that out of the plant um, and give it to people in an amount they can use for a benefit to their horse. So um, what is the problem with the diet of most modern domestic horses? Um, the problem, it's a little bit like what's the problem with most humans, uh, not enough of this. Um, antioxidants, we're, we're taught to eat our five a day, we're taught to eat fresh food, food that we know where it's come from, um, food without chemical use, um, and if, you, if you're doing that, that, that's a healthy way to go forward. So um, the problem with today's diet is how often does the horse get access to this sort of um, forage? Uh, not very often, I wouldn't imagine. Um, I think there are some people that are well into hedgerow foraging, um, and I think if you make sure 50% of your food comes from uh, green plants, if you can get it in the winter it's a little bit harder, um, then you've got a healthier horse than if you just rely on bag food or on um, hay that's been grown as a, a crop for dairy cattle. Um, so it's what the plant contains chemical wise that's the important thing and if you're feeding um, things that ingredients like brewers, uh, distillers, grains, that is uh, really a waste byproduct, the chances of it containing any kind of uh, benefit to the horse are, are fairly low. Well, I, get, I often get asked about grasses from people. My bottom line feeling is that if you are feeding a lot of bagged feeds, a lot of hay that's been uh, cut from grass that's newly bred, so somewhere in the 1960s, um, then it's going to contain more sugar. So that's your bottom line. If you're doing that, then the more of these plants with antioxidants in, there's a saying that we have in the UK of um, eat your five a day, your five vegetables. And I think if you relate that to the horse, these represent your five a day, except a horse will need possibly 25 a day, not five, to help him digest um, whatever it is you're giving. If you're feeding the modern um, species of grass, it's a little bit like eating McDonald's, um, a little bit, in that they are manipulated for high sugar. They're manipulated to produce um, cows, to help cows sustain a high milk yield. So. Why they would um, could be translated to horses is a mystery really, they can't be. So the more of this that you give, um, clearly you can't always change the grass in your paddock. So the more variety of plants you give, the more the, the chemicals in these plants will help them to digest the, the sugar. And of course it makes sure that the horse gets enough exercise. Um, so the, here we are, the culprit or the baddie, the bad grass is um, the perennial rye. 
Uh, it's, it's only bad, really, if it's a modern species of perennial rye. We analysed three types, um, and we had one that was grown before pre-1920, or was bred, if that's the term that you use for grass, pre-1920. Um, it compared, it had almost a quarter of the sugar as compared to the modern um, species of perennial rye, which were very high and are bred to, for dairy cattle. So it's very important if you're worried about the weight of your horse or laminitis that you check um, that uh, it's not a modern species. So if you've got that in your field, try to get rid of it. Um, that meadow coxfoot and meadow foxtail, uh, or that's a timothy actually, that one is a timothy. It's always quite difficult, you almost have to have that's more a foxtail. So uh, the long one is a timothy and the shorter tuftier one is a foxtail um, and that's a coxfoot. These vary really, again the older species the better, if they've been sort of bred to put in a cattle mix it's always worth checking when you're buying the seed, where was it bred, when was it bred, um, because the older the varieties, the, the less chance it has of having too much sugar. But it's that one really that you need to be very careful of. The fescues are, are clearly all round better. Um, they actually contain far less sugar. Well, they are far less appetising because of that, but that's a good thing. Um, we have a lot of Yorkshire fog on our pasture, um, and it it's actually doesn't taste very nice. Uh, I mean, that's it. It's, it's a rubbish grass. It's a noxious weed um, and horses don't really like it, but that's good. Um, I think that is what you want for a, a native pony is you want to provide him with something that he, his brain doesn't say, quick, eat all that, it's sugar. Um, you know, let's eat as much as we can. If they only eat a bit of it before they get fed up, well, that's much better for them. Um, and then that's the plantain. I do get asked a lot about weeds and how much sugar they contain. I think the dandelion is another one I get asked a lot about, which we don't seem to have any of. Um, again, my, my thoughts on that are, if you're eating your 25 a day, then they can sustain some weeds with sugar without any problem. It's the bitterness um, and the, the antioxidants that bitter plants contain that help them digest the sugar. And that's really what you need to bear in mind.